Well, let me start first with this, this GameStop story. I'm not sure everybody understands who or what GameStop is. This is an American company. It's a retailer of video game devices, uh, like an Xbox, the games that you play yourself, and peripherals, things that you might need to play them. They have nearly 6,000 locations around the world, although most of them in the United States. And for the last year, um, GameStop has been considered pretty much a non-essential business, which means that anytime COVID rears it up, it's one of the first businesses to be closed or you move to some online sales. And as a result, its revenues have been going down, its profits have been going down, and its stock price has been going down. And all of that makes perfect sense. Now, Wall Street allows investors to buy and sell stock, but it also allows them to buy options. And an option is a chance for me to make a bet on which way a company is going. So seeing what GameStop had been going through and then looking ahead for the next three or four months, uh, there were a lot of what they call hedge funds who were betting that this decline in performance would continue. And frankly, again, that's all great logical sense. Now we have to introduce you to a second platform that's called Reddit. It's a social media platform. And, and not everyone knows about Reddit, and it's used in different ways, but one of the ways is to connect people of an interest, a community of interest. So let's suppose that I'm a stamp collector and I collect, I don't know, the postage stamps of Poland. I could find other Poland postage stamp collectors and we could chit chat. Well, there were fans of video games, we call them gamers, and fans of GameStop who said, we don't like this. We don't want to see our business go like this, and we hate that those Wall Street types are betting on this uh, store getting even worse, performing even worse. We, we want to do something about it. So first time we've ever seen this happen, uh, these nice people decided, ordinary people decided to collude and cooperate to try to raise the price of GameStop stock. In essence, I'll buy from you, you sell it back to me, and we call this, or we normally would call this, a pump and dump scheme, meaning I'm going to promote the stock, pump it up, get the price to go up. Because I'd invested early, I'll sell out when I think it gets high enough, and then I'll walk away and watch the whole thing collapse, and ordinary people lose out. That is called stock manipulation, and we don't believe in it. We don't think it's the right thing to be doing. Here these people are doing stock manipulation, but lots of people read this story thinking, but they're doing it for a good reason. You know, they're trying to help their company and do this. And how successful they were in the last three weeks, shares in GameStop have gone up 1,000%. 1,000%. Meaning this stock, which is trading, or recently had been trading for around $250 a share, should really be maybe $20 a share. This is how much they've pumped it up. And yes, as a result, we've had news this week that some of the hedge funds who had taken these positions betting against the stock have had to walk away from their positions. They've lost money. Some estimates are several billion dollars have been lost given that GameStop went in the wrong direction. And the Main Streeters are saying, look at us, look at what we've done, look at how proud we are. But here's my problem with this, and that's why I don't think this story is over to pump up the stock, they had to buy and sell it to one another. Well, now these ordinary citizens own stock that is tremendously overvalued. It is not worth $250 a share. Sooner or later, and I'm thinking probably in the next week to 10 days, reality is going to hit. And this stock that they pumped up to $250 is going to do what we always see, which is drop suddenly, and now the billions that were lost by Wall Street are going to be matched by billions lost by Main Streeters, if you will. So I'm not sure this is a happy story, but what we've also seen this week is that using Reddit was not constrained to just GameStop. We now know that AMC, that's a movie chain in the United States, same problem, non-essential service, stock going in the wrong direction. People were fighting the short selling of it. Um, Blackberry, a Canadian company, its stock has gone up, I think, about 400%. And, and yes, God bless, BlackBerry has turned itself around, but it shouldn't be at that level. Uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, uh, another retailer that was non-essential, stock going in the wrong direction, and they've done this. So there's now a lot of questions as to whether we should be doing something about it. Uh, should we be constraining Reddit in some way? Uh, should we allow these kinds of organized pump and dump schemes, even if there's um, 
you know, it's not menace in their heart, but, but you know, trying to support this company that I love, should we do something about that? And, uh, and then the other question for the SEC was help this is a lot of low cost uh, brokerage firms, meaning that I can go on and buy 100 shares in GameStop and pay a $5 commission. I don't have to pay any big commissions. Uh, so in the United States, one of these firms is called Robinhood. It allows online trading at a very low cost. And, and as a result, relatively unsophisticated investors have gone in. Another question that's come out is, well, was, was this because people had money they were prepared to waste? Who has money they have to waste during a pandemic? And of course, we know just a few weeks ago, there were these $600 checks sent out in the United States. Mr. Biden is looking to increase that and send out a further check. Some people have suggested $1,200 to $1,500. Are people using these relief checks for relief or are they using them to play in the stock market? So there are lots of questions and we're not going to know by the time it's done. And let me just give you one last one. This does look like it was an innocent scheme on Reddit, but what if, if you investigate and find that there really are some nefarious individuals who were purposely inciting the crowd to do this, but they themselves were going to personally benefit. Uh, and I'm not sure when the dust settles on this, we won't find that there were some nefarious individuals behind this. So we're in the middle of it now, None of this is going to cause a stock market crash. None of this is going to cause a recession or a depression, but we're seeing people using tools in ways that they were never intended to be used, whether it's Reddit, whether it's Robinhood. People are doing things, uh, I call it the law of unintended consequences in ways we weren't intending. And now the question is, should we be doing something to constrain them to make them do it what we want them to do? So today that story sounds a bit like Wall Street complaining because we got bruised and battered. Well, you've made money on me, high time you share the pain. But the bottom line is there's going to be a lot of individuals who are also going to lose out. And I'm not sure they are the ones who can afford to lose out. Wall Street can lose a billion dollars and pick themselves up and dust themselves off. The average person, if you lost $10,000 in all this, it could be personally devastating. So uh, I'm sorry that's a long answer to a rather simple kind of a question, but this story is still unfolding itself, and I'm afraid by, by say, Valentine's Day of 2021, we may, may see a lot more pain out there than we are today and all the joy that people are celebrating.